Hi there, welcome to my daily update videos. Actually, these aren't so daily at the moment. They feel more like twice or three times a week. But I'm glad you're here anyway. And I have a few thoughts in a moment about, um, about how to build our faith and a real key when faith doesn't seem to be working. But uh, hey, before I do that, a few housekeeping things as normal if you're new to my YouTube channel. Uh, please consider hitting the subscribe button down there or down there, down there, down there. Um, secondly, you know, we also put this out as an audio podcast um, every day that we do these videos. So you'd be welcome to, uh, to check that out as well. Uh, what have I been doing recently? So I was on a missions trip to Ireland, got back about a week ago and um, just been... Um, recovering still after that and uh, I'm actually working on establishing a permanent Europe missions team where a permanent team here in the United States that will do missions in uh, Ireland, UK, France, Belgium and I'm also looking at India before the end of the year so anybody interested in missions uh, more details about that soon um, this I have a busy summer coming up I'm going to be in France twice to separate trips to France in the summer. I'm going to be in Texas, uh, doing a conference in Pennsylvania in August, be back in the UK in September, and uh, it's going to be a good summer, a summer of harvest. The harvest is now, so boom. Hey, this coming Sunday, I'm going to be here in Sturbridge Worship Center, my home church here, speaking about grace, the power to change, the power to be transformed. So if you are in New England, You'd be very welcome to join us this coming Sunday uh, for that. Good. Hey, let me show something uh, quick with you guys uh, that uh, I've just been thinking about in the last few days. A verse I'm sure many of you know, and yet it really is so true. There's a couple of verses. There's many verses that actually say this, but let me pick two of them really quickly. Hosea 4 verse 6. God is speaking and he says, my people, my people, not the world, not the enemy, not the neighbors. He says, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. And then he says, because you have rejected knowledge, I will reject you. He says, since you have forgotten the law of your God or the word of God, I will forget your children. Yuck. Wow. Now, of course, that's under the old covenant, if you will, but uh, the principle still applies to the new. Let me also read Isaiah 5.13. It says, therefore, my people, my people again, go into exile for a lack of knowledge. Because of a lack of knowledge, the honored men go hungry and the multitudes are parched with thirst. And I, I just want to challenge you really quickly today. I think so often we're going through trials or tests or things when what we think we believe isn't working. And so often we're, we, we default, religion always defaults to distance and delay. Religion always defaults to thinking there's something going on here. God has a reason why I'm going through this. Religion always defaults to looking in your past rather than looking over the cross. Maybe years ago, there's some root to this thing rather than, is it simply a lack of knowledge? God says, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge, yeah. Well, one of the heroes, my heroes, when I was growing up in my faith, uh, was a guy called Norval Hayes. I'd really encourage you to listen to Norval Hayes. You'll find him on YouTube. He was really raw, like a, <laughs> you know, like a, he, he'd go into somebody's room and just kick the relatives out and say, do you want to live or do you want to die? You know, a really rough guy in his faith, but a really caring, lovely guy. He was a you know, a very rich guy, when being a multimillionaire actually meant something in the 50s and 60s, he was a very rich guy, had a bunch of businesses, and yet, um, you know, really served God. He was a soul winner. No matter how high he got in ministry, uh, you know, he'd be speaking on platforms with Kenneth Hagin to 20,000 people, and every day he'd be on the streets with a bunch of tracts in college campuses, witnessing, leading people to Jesus. Um, you know, helping the poor, food distribution, helping unwed mothers, teenage pregnancy kind of ministries. And, uh, you know, he tells the story once of the Lord took him to heaven. I mean, literally, he's the, you know, open vision physically, if you will, in heaven, talking with the Lord, experiencing the glories of heaven. And um, the Lord spoke to him about a ministry God wanted him to start to help unwed mothers and uh, in his town of Cleveland, Tennessee. But, but here's where I'm going with this. There's a, there's a point in his... The time this guy spent it face to face with Jesus, where he asked the Lord a question. And he, in a way, he says, Lord, why did my mom die? 
And he, this guy, Novel Hayes, had grown up a Southern Baptist, you know, with Southern Baptist doctrine. And uh, his mother, when he was, a, I think, a teenager, his mother had died of cancer. And when he meets the Lord, he says to the Lord, why did my mom have to die? And the Lord shot back to him and said, straight away, your, mom, your mother didn't have to die. And he said, so Lord, why did she die? And the Lord basically said this verse, she died for a lack of knowledge. And the Lord, the Lord turned to him with great love and said, your mom's here with me, but your mom died because she went to the wrong church. Yeah, think about that. Your mother died because you went to the wrong church. And I, I believe that's really true. I think people sit there in the wrong church, listening to the wrong teaching for years. Do you know when you've been taught against something or you've been taught poor teaching for years, it's very hard to have faith when you have a lack of knowledge and you've literally institutionalized a lack of knowledge in your life. If you don't, if you go to a church that doesn't believe God saves, it's actually very hard to step into salvation. I know whereof I speak. I was a missionary in France many years and I would speak to people who would go to churches, primarily Roman Catholic churches, that wouldn't clearly teach salvation. And it was hard to help them into faith for salvation because they weren't embedded in that teaching. It's easy to get the Southern Baptist saved. They, that's the only thing they hear. You must be born again. Uh, if you've been taught against the power of the Holy Spirit, it's hard to lead somebody into the experience of Holy Spirit. Yeah. And I want to suggest to you, is your life being destroyed right now? You say, Graham, I'm not being destroyed, but sometimes even our day is being destroyed or our health is being destroyed or our children are being destroyed. Our business is being destroyed. Our walk with God, our ministry is being destroyed. Why? For a lack of knowledge. Yeah, Jesus said, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. For years, I've challenged people and said, you know, Jesus never said the truth set you free. Excuse me. He said the truth that you know will set you free. And I think when we're on a journey of faith, we need to surround ourselves with the knowledge of God. We need a strategy and a plan to surround ourselves according to the knowledge of God. So let me give you four quick thoughts on that today. Number one, God loves everybody the same. Come on, he really does. God loves everybody. God has no favorite children in that sense. He loves us all the same. And yet the degree to which we are the recipients, the beneficiaries of God's goodness, his power, his provision, his healing is not all the same. And it has to do not with how much, the issue is not how much does God love me? That's a starting point. But the issue is how much of God's word have I actually buried within my heart? Am I being destroyed for a lack of knowledge? So don't simply, it's, it's vital that we anchor our hearts in that truth, that revelation that God loves us. But don't stop there. You, you decide, you measure. Jesus spoke about those who would measure the word. He said, with the measure you meet, it will be measured unto you. The scoop, the measure, the, the quantity, the quantum of God's word you put before you will determine what will happen in your life. Jesus put it this way in Mark 4, I believe it's about verse 19 in the Amplifier. It says, the measure of thought and study you give to the truth you hear will determine the measure of power and virtue that flows back into your life. Wow. Sila, worth thinking about that. So again, key number two here, we, we need to learn things, amen, but we also need to unlearn things. And I, I want to ask you that and challenge you today. What is God calling you to unlearn in this season? Yeah, before we can learn, we need to unlearn. When I was a teenager in the 1980s, God called me to live my faith financially. And um, I mean, I had two or three problems, really. Problem number one, I had no money. It's great. Number two, I had no faith. <laughs> but number three, I wasn't actually at zero in the process, in the journey. I had to unlearn things. I wasn't like some brand new Christian. I'd had several years of religion that I had to literally, un I had to lift up and ungird and throw away before I could actually begin to put in place the principles of the kingdom of heaven in my life. I had to unlearn before I could learn. I had to unlearn the ways of men and the ways of religion before I could learn the ways of God. Come on, key number three, I think if we're going to move away from a place where my people are destroyed from a place where we're living under the destroyer. You know, it's interesting. For years, I used to misquote John 10, verse 10. I used to, the back half of it. 
John 10, 10 says, you know, the thief comes to steal, kill and destroy. And for years, I always used to say the thief comes to kill, steal and destroy. And then I realized once, no, Satan actually, if Satan, Satan comes, it's, it literally says steal, kill and destroy. If Satan can't steal the word of God from your life, he can't kill you and he can't destroy you. My people are destroyed. Remember we read. And the key to upending Satan's enemy action in your life is to stop him stealing the word. Do you remember Jesus said, Mark 4, Howbeit, when the word is sown, Satan comes immediately and steals the word out of the heart of him who hears. So we need to, I believe, have a plan to surround ourselves to like an ongoing exposure to the word of God. I was talking with some friends yesterday and we're planning to go to a conference in uh, Texas in the summer and where we'll literally sit there, you know, from 9 a.m. to 9 or 10 p.m., 12, 13 hours a day, basically teaching, surrounded by the word of God, day after day after day after day after day. And every year I've been to this conference, I always complain. It's the only time I complain. No, you know, I, I'm not, it's not the most comfortable place to be. And, you know, I'm sharing a hotel suite with friends. We've got to fly in. And I always end up thinking, ah, oh, this is the last year I'm going. I'll just stay at home next year and watch this on TV. But I know there's something about being there. There's something about sitting under the Word of God for hours and hours and hours and hours. It's interesting. I've been going to that conference every year for about five or six years now. And at multiple reprise multiple times during my life during the coming year I find suddenly this deposit of faith I need is there it's really hard to build faith when you need faith it's hard to build faith when the destroyer comes my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge so I encourage you have a plan have a strategy to surround yourself in the word of God hey one last thought here today but um that verse is, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. I think God wants to take us on this four-step journey where we hear the word of God. If you will, we go from knowledge and then we act upon the word of God. We activate the word of God when we act upon the word of God. Thirdly, that leads us, we go from knowledge to experience. And then, if you will, it's sort of like we come back to knowledge. And yet third level knowledge is different than first level knowledge. We, we hear something in the Bible, that's knowledge. Secondly, we act upon it, we experience it. Thirdly, we come into knowledge, but it's, it's personal knowledge. There's a difference between somebody hearing in the Bible, Jesus is the savior of the world, them experiencing salvation, and then them coming to a saving personal knowledge. I know in whom I believed. I'm fully persuaded. That's a man who's experienced salvation. And God wants us to have a knowledge of his word that comes from good doctrine. It comes from being in a good church. It comes from good teaching, but it actually comes from personal experience. I prove this. I know this works in my life. And lastly, here's the point I want you to catch. We get to distribute. We get to be brokers. We get to give away the knowledge we proved in God. We get to give away that third level knowledge, the things we've heard, we've experienced, and then we proved those are the things we get to give away. And the danger in the Western world, in the evangelical church, is we try and move from step one to step four. We try to hear the things of the Bible and give them to others, and they end up not really working for us, and then not working for others, and people implode and walk away from God because they haven't actually proved these things out in their life. We need people in a pulpit on a Sunday morning who proved what they preach, not who've rehashed or reheard a, a sermon on YouTube, but have actually lived and experienced these things. So my encouragement today to you, and I say that in great love, is if your life, if your day, if your joy, if your, if anything is being destroyed, yeah, stop blaming God. Start looking at your knowledge level and then have a plan. My son, attend to my words, incline your ear to my sayings, keep them before your eyes, keep them in the midst of your heart. They, my words, are life to those who find them and health, healing to all their flesh. Selah. Hey, hit that subscribe button there. Uh, check out the links below. Sign up for our email newsletter. And I hope to see you soon in the plan of God. Bye for now.